Please consider doing some survival puzzles while thinking out loud. Okay, let's do a survival up to 60. Let's, let me just do a classic run up to 60. I might put this up on YouTube. So if I decide to put it up on YouTube, welcome people of YouTube. It's hard to over explain the first 15, 20 exercises. They're generally very rudimentary like here. Okay, obviously we have to take the bishop. And the first 20 puzzles are generally predicated on knowledge of very basic chess themes. So I think over explaining them has the opposite effect. I'm just going to name the theme and the theme guides you toward the solution here. Obviously, back rank mate. OK, here king is very confined. So we're looking for mate. There is a mate in one. Here's another back rank mate. We take the rooks and that's mate. Here is a clear attack against the king because we've got an assembly of pieces. Queen takes g6. This is a form of legal's mate where the bishop controls the king's only escape square. I, again, simple checkmate in two. We've got contact on f7. We go for mate. First thing I see is the battery. Can we go to g7? No. Can we go to h8? Yes. Again, I see the battery uh, that we can build on h2. That's a checkmate. OK, a different kind of battery. This time we've got the rook and the queen on the seventh. Uh, we can take two different rooks, but obviously queen f7 and queen g7 was mate. All right, so starting from problem number 11, things tend to get a little bit more involved. So there's a little more calculation that you generally have to do. So here what I see is that there's a b2 pawn. It's hanging, and that move results in a fork. But that also walks into a uh, lateral uh, discovery against the black queen. So white can play bishop takes h7 check, but if you keep calculating, you see that after king takes h7, queen takes b2, the knight can hop into d3 with a fork against the king and the queen. So this is just a matter of short calculation, short and simple calculation. OK, so black is promoted. We have to take the queen. Now it makes sense to promote the far, most far advanced pawn. We need the help of our king for that. This is another simple checkmate. Bishop takes g2, followed by rook takes c1. Of course, you have to see that the rooks are in a standoff. So that helps you see the mate quickly. OK, queen g6. So again, I'm noticing a standoff between two pieces. There is a classic discovery and then checkmate to follow because the bishop is pinned. OK, first thing I see is the battery. I also see that the uh, escape square for the king is controlled by the bishop. So this is going to be a classic mate. You see this a lot in puzzle battle. OK, so we have two pawns, both of them about to queen. We simply give our bishop up for one of the pawns and promote the other. OK, so I'm looking at the king, looking for mating constructions. Yes, bishop steps back to f5. That's made in two because the queen controls all of the lateral escape squares. All right, this is a classic mating pattern, mate in three. You deliver checks with both of your pawns and then mate on the side with rook h2. All right, so here again, we're looking for some sort of a mate. Queen controls one file, rook controls another file. So we involve the third rook, sorry, the second rook, <laughs> rook takes b7. Again, we're looking for mate. And again, we see checkmate with bishop g5. The king is helping establish the mating construction. OK, so problem 20 has been reached that this the second third is going to be generally slightly longer variations, but still very basic exercises. So here, for example, obviously we should take the bishop and now we look for mating patterns and one mating pattern involves bishop c4, king h7. And oftentimes you have to look for uh, retreating moves, right? Oftentimes the difficulty is predicated on some sort of move that's not hard to understand, but it can be hard to locate. Uh, in, in the sea of possibilities. So particularly, we're paying attention to retreating moves, bishop c4 and queen h5. OK, this is a classic construction. Anytime you see a knight on e5 like this and a queen on its initial square and then a king on its initial square, you should be thinking about queen h5 check, g6, and then, of course, knight takes g6, and the rook is typically going to be hanging in these. OK, so the bishop is hanging. What do we take it with? Well, I'm noticing that the rook on a5 can potentially be forked. Uh, with queen to d8, so obviously we need to take it with the bishop, and now the queens are traded, we're up a piece. Piggies on the seventh, there's generally going to be a mating construction, we take the pawn. How does the knight help? Well, we can't go knight c3 because that's defended, but the knight defends the b2 square, which allows the other rook to step into a1 with mate. You often have these with a pawn on a3 or c3, it's essentially the same thing. Okay, so... I see some alignment of the king and the queen, but obviously rook e7 does not work. Let's consider the checks. Queen c1 check. Yeah, it's probably queen c1 check. Then queen d2 check. And now a very important tactic that forms the basis for a lot of the puzzle rush tactics where you have the queens in a standoff 
they don't necessarily have to be adjacent. They just have to be making contact. And the king is the worst defender because when the king is checked, it has to respond to the check by definition. So deflection sacrifices involving the king are the most common types of deflections. Well, the deflection here is really obvious. It's rook g2, and we win the queen. Okay, so here again, we're looking for mating patterns, some sort of Arabian mate. First, it makes sense to step back with the knight. And here again, your pattern recognition should take over rook c8, and rook d8 is simply checkmate. Okay, so we are in check. There's only one reasonable way to defend against this check, and that is to push the pawn up to c6. Now, what have they taken? They took a bishop. So we are currently up a rook or up an exchange. But if we take the knight, then they take on c6 and win all of our pieces. So we just take the bishop and take the knight. This was just about responding to threats. OK, so this one is also going to be basic mating patterns. You're looking at the age file. You're seeing that the rook and the queen are on the same file. OK, knight f6 and now a standard Arabian mate with queen h7, rook takes h7. All right, so here this is a question of what pawn do we push? The most tempting move is b7, and it's not checkmate. Black can give the knight up for the pawn, and it's important to observe that we are down a minor piece to start the puzzle. That, that becomes important in later puzzles when the margins kind of thin out. So clearly, it's got to be c7. Okay, now I'm looking for some sort of mating pattern against the king. Oftentimes, this involves driving the king to the second rank and then checking the king again. So we're looking at queen d1, king g2, rook d2, king h3, and now the retreating move that I mentioned, the queen drops back to h5, and delivers checkmate. Why does rook d1, king g2, and rook d2 not work? Well, in that position, the king can slide over to f1. And if we try to ladder mate him with queen d1, the white rook is going to cover that from e1. So this is actually going to be, sorry, queen d1, rook e2, and queen back to h5. Okay, this is a simple back ranker. Knight d7 drives the king into the corner. And now queen takes c8 and rook takes c8 as mate. Again, we have the alignment of the queen and the rook on the h file, which tells me that we have to break through the h file, which tells me it's knight takes h5. Very easy. Okay, so we've got a lot, a lot going for us here. The white king seems to be very, very weak. Let's look for checks and captures. Well, bishop takes f3 doesn't seem very effective. Queen e3 check just trades queens. What about rook to e3 trying to fork the queen and the knight? Well, the queen has to drop back to d1, but then the queen and the king are aligned. So if we can lure this rook away from f1, we'll have a fork. And we can do that by capturing the knight. Okay, rook e3, capture the knight, and then rook e1, win the queen. Pretty easy so far, nothing special. All right, so here we, we probably have to start by recapturing the rook. I'm not seeing anything against the white king. Knight f3 doesn't make sense. Queen takes h2, obviously it takes. So this is a matter of deciding where to run. And... What I'm seeing is that the black queen is unprotected. So we have to be very careful not to allow some sort of a discovery. My instinct is to run away from the attack. So king f6. But here we have to do a little bit of calculation. So king f6 or king d6? King d6 just looks way too scary. So king f6 makes more sense because the king seems to be safer when it runs away from the attack. But that's also where they kind of get you. King d6... I feel like is very messy. They go rook d7 check, king e5, queen c3. No, it's got to be king f6. Queen h8 check. And notice that I made that decision intuitively. I did very little calculation. So again, king f5 runs into rook takes f7. I think we're actually escaping to h5, and it can be worthwhile to identify an escape score before you start. Here, the best escape score is h5, because if the queen would have captured f7, we can actually block with a minor piece. So g4. King takes g4, and we've successfully escaped. Okay, this is a simple mate. The queen makes contact with the rook, so if we can deflect the other rook, it's going to be an Arabian mate. Bishop takes f2, deflection, check, and mate. This is another simple checkmate. I'm looking at the bishop. I'm looking at the queen. They can combine in a mating pattern. We start with a check. Now, taking with the bishop would make very little sense here uh, because, well, the king would just move to f1. And wherever we would go with the queen, we would give up the bishop. So we have to take with a queen... And as always, we return to h4. So look how many positions are, are, are end essentially with a retreating queen move. Very, very common in puzzle battle. Okay, so this is a mating pattern everybody should know. When I see this bishop on f6, I'm immediately thinking about a rook appearing on h8. But for a rook to appear on h8, the h file has to be opened up. For the h file to be opened up, we have to give away the pawn and then get our rook to h8. So what do we have here? Well, we've got a situation where white's king is actually very safe. That's the first thing I see, which tells me that 
along the, the sequence, we might have a quiet move. We might have a non-check move. And even though black has a lot of pieces around white's king, I don't actually see a threat. So the most obvious move is rook c8 check. Black is probably going to trade and try to hide away on h7. But then we can bring the other rook to d8. We can set up a battery along the eighth rank. And because black doesn't have any meaningful checks, I don't think that black will have a good defense to rook h8 checkmate. So check, takes, and here are the key observation. Even though the king is all alone, black has no threats. There's no knight g4, and there's no queen g3 or queen takes h3. So that tells me that when I look for the sequence, I'm not necessarily looking only for checking moves. So starting from problem number 35 or so, it becomes important to also ask, does your opponent have a threat? Am I in a position where I can make a quiet move? Okay, so this is a very important pattern that I've had in my games before. Uh, what you need to do is put pressure on the F1 rook. And if you put pressure on the rook, you're essentially forcing white uh, to get back rank mated. So here's an example from one of my games that I just remembered where something very, very similar can be observed. Okay, so this is a game from 2005, and it's very similar. It's black to play and win. So you start with a check on d1. If king h2, then you mate him with queen d6. But if white goes bishop f1, which is what happened in the game, what is the winning move here? And I found it in the game because I was familiar with the pattern. Queen, queen e2. Queen e2, but why not queen e1? Queen e1 is wrong because white plays queen takes c4, and suddenly uh, the queen and the bishop are linked up. So you actually need to play queen e2. White has a meaningless check, but that doesn't do anything. The bishop is going to be lost, and the game is going to be lost with it. Okay. Same concept, queen e2, putting pressure on. It doesn't matter if there's a rook or the bishop there. It's the same idea, and then you go for checkmate. All right. So... We should start with rook g7. You could play that move without thinking. And here, again, this is pure pattern recognition. You need to realize that dropping the rook back to g3 would be mate uh, if it weren't for the move f6. So what you need to do is you need to take the pawn first, go back to g7. And most people watching this, you've probably come across an exercise like this. Okay, so here we've done 40 so far, nothing special. I see the queen. I see the knight. We would like to go knight f6. So maybe some of your, your, your intuition is is related to the move rook c7 but remember black does not have to oblige if you go rook c7 here trying to deflect the queen black for example can even take the knight give up the queen and black will have two rooks for the queen and some pawns uh as a result so this is where counting material becomes important knight g5 uh, is a simple mating construction mate on h7 is inevitable 41 again we're looking for checkmate because we've got all these pieces rook b8 is bad because the knight blocks. So we got to give the other check. And again, we have an Arabian mate, knight b6 and rook b7. All right. So we're down a minor piece. We're down a minor piece, but white's king is obviously very, very weak. So currently our rook is hanging. I don't see any checks. So by default, we should consider rook moves. Now, do, do we have any rook moves with tempo? Well, we do. We have the move rook to a8. The queen has only one meaningful escape score, queen c4. And now I'm seeing the very tempting move rook to a2 check skewering the white rook. If the king moves up to d3, you should notice that queen takes f3 is already mate. If the king steps back to c1 or d1, I'm also seeing that the rook on h1 is unprotected, so we can slide the rook up to a1 with a skewer against the rook, and then we'll be up in exchange, and we'll have a very big attack. So rook a8 it is, check, check, takes. Okay, this is another mating pattern that all of you should be familiar with. What you should notice is that the knight is hanging. So potentially we can play the move h takes g5 and open up the h file. So there's no logical way to explain this other than that this is a mating pattern that, again, I've had it in my games before and it's like wearing different clothes. But here's the game where I had a very, very similar mating pattern. In this position, my opponent went knight takes e5, knight takes e5, and e takes d3. So one component is that a bishop has to be cutting off the lateral escape square. The other component is that you open up the h file and deliver mate with a heavy piece. So the mate here is knight takes g6. Very simple, h takes g6 and queen h3 black gets checkmated here. Same type of concept uh, where you need to first remove the pawn from h2, and now you play h takes g5 with mate. Okay, so here we're obviously looking for uh, some sort of a mating pattern. I, I would imagine. 
At the same time, we're noticing that Rook takes C7 is a pretty nasty threat. So we don't necessarily want to allow it unless we're 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 delivering force mate. So one mating pattern is to go rook d8 and try to go rook g8. But we're not in time. If we go rook d8, white's going to take on c7 with check and then take the bishop on e7. That gives the king an escape score to f6, which tells me that maybe a, a more defensive move should be considered here. Can we make a multi-purpose move that both defends this pawn but also sets up threats against the white king? Well, the move that I'm noticing is rook to d7. That sets up massive threats against the white king along the seventh rank. It also protects the c7 pawn. So my instinct is to play rook d7. So just looking for a second, do we have any other moves? I don't see anything. Rook d7, okay, they're just going to give this up. Okay, g3, the puzzle continues. Fortunately, we have an escape square for the rook. All right. So here, first thing I notice is that the h file is open. We have a queen, we have a rook, and the move queen h5 I think is pretty rudimentary. Okay, easy enough. All right, so in this position, white is going this way. We're playing black. And we are going this way. So we do. We need to do everything possible in order to halt the progression of white's pawns. And it seems logical for us to try to generate a passed pawn of our own. So the move, which I think we should start with, is king to b2. And this is going to be brute force calculation. King b2. White plays h7. We stop the pawn from behind because that's what we're taught to do. King b2, h7, rook h1, king g6. White has to defend the pawn. We play king takes a2. White plays king g7. We play king takes b3. h8 equals queen. Rook takes h8. King takes h8. c4, g4, c3, g5, c2, g6, c1, queen, and we win because white has a knight pawn, and if the knight pawn reaches the seventh rank, it's still a win. This is where knowledge of theoretical endgames really helps you determine the evaluation. Okay, so they end up going g4. Well, there's no need for us to move the rook yet because white's not threatening to promote. So let's con continue with our plan, continue with our plan, continue with our plan. And now is the moment where we need to stop the pawn. But we need to invest a second and say, okay, do we stop the pawn this way or do we stop the pawn this way? Well, probably we stop the pawn from behind because that's what we're taught to do. Now, a, lot, a, bit, a common mistake among newer players in such a situation is to play the move rook takes h7. Remember that you don't, you waste the tempo by voluntarily giving up the rook for the pawn. You need to wait for white to promote. That buys you a tempo. Then you eliminate that pawn anyway. So you go c3, c2, and we got the same position via a different move order. All right. So here we have a situation where white is down a minor piece. At the same time, we have these two very impressive pawns. Let's consider the check. So we have queen f5 check, but I don't really see what this move accomplishes. The king can step back to h8. Some of you will probably be attracted to queen to f8 check, but black doesn't have to take the queen. Black can go king h7. It's very important to notice that the bishop defends the rook, so these eighth rank combinations are likely to fail. I'm also noticing that the queen is making contact with g7. So the move bishop to d4 naturally stems from that observation. Bishop d4 forks the queen and threatens checkmate. The queen cannot capture on h3 because our queen also protects that pawn. Does the queen have any squares? No. Black has the desperado move. Bishop takes g2 check, but I think we can just take with the king there. Okay, easy, easy exercise. We're almost at 50. All right, so here we have a, a simple case of using the two rooks to checkmate the black king. This is where just familiarity with basic mating patterns really comes in handy. The move is rook d to e4. And that sets up the unstoppable threat of rook 2 e3 main. In a lot of these, notice how the role that is played by the king. The king is in a sort of passive role, but it's participating in the mating mechanism because it's controlling a lot of the enemy king's escape square. So that's kind of an important detail to keep in mind. Rook e3 mate. All right. One more and we're at 50. So what is the first thing I see here? Well, I see that the queens are in a standoff. So it would be great if we had some sort of a discovered attack with the knight, but a, dis a discovered check, that is. But a discovered check isn't the only type of tactic. Here we have a second order discovered check. We move the knight onto a square such that it threatens to deliver a check or capture a piece with check. So you, would, you might think, oh, so it's knight d4. And if queen takes queen, then we first take the bishop with check. Notice that the knight is now in a defended square. And then we take back with the queen with an extra minor piece. But you have to be careful where you put the knight. Knight d4 allows queen takes d4, and that's no good. We have to put the knight on e5. Here, obviously, the queen can't take. And now we collect our loot, and we take the queen, and bang, we're at 50. Okay. 
Off we go to 60. Mm. Okay, so here, what do we have? We have two pieces for the Rook. We also have an X-ray against uh, the F2 pawn. So I think the move has to be Bishop to G4, because if the Queen slides away, then we have Knight takes E2. If White goes F3, okay, now there's got to be some sort of a winning tactic. So to me, there are two candidate discoveries. There's Knight E2 check. And there is the much more tempting knight takes f3 check. I think knight takes f3 check is more promising. Now, knight e2 check would be promising if you could then play knight g3 check, like in that other tactic, and open up the h file and let's say get the queen to h5 efficiently. But you can't do that here. The queen has no access, uh, direct access, I should say, to any squares along the h file, which is why I think we should go knight takes f3 check. Then we should simply go for the gain of material. How do we go for the gain of material? where, well, we need to step away with a knight onto a square that carries a threat. The only move that fits the bill is knight takes h2, because we're hitting the rook, we're hitting the queen, and we're simultaneously protecting the bishop with the knight, which is important because the other knight is going to be pinned. Bang. This is just an exercise in collecting material. Okay. Now we have a situation where the black king is very clearly compromised. Why is it compromised? Because it's in the center and because this diagonal is open. The knight is also pinned. So in a lot of these, the correct solution is knight takes e5 and then some sort of a check. But because we're in the 50s, you have to approach each position concretely. This would be wrong because the king can step forward to e7. And if you give a check with the other bishop to g5, that check can be simply blocked with f6. Queen a4 check looks like it has to be the move because it makes contact with the bishop, eliminating the blocking moves with the knight. And if queen a4 check queen d7, then we can play bishop to b5, pinning the queen, forcing the knight back to c6, and then we collect the bishop on g4. Easy enough. Okay, so knight f6, this hits the bishop, uh, hits the queen, hits the bishop. We need to move the queen onto a square such that it protects the bishop. Okay, obviously queen c4. Okay, so we're down a rook. That tells me the move has to be some sort of a check. There's only one logical check. That's queen a6 check. Now we need to decide between a couple of different tempting moves. The checks here are rook h1 and rook d8. Do either of them do anything? Well, rook h1 check, white can simply block with rook g1. I don't really see the point of that. Rook d8 check allows the king to escape to c1. So are there any non-checks? Are there any threats or captures that could help heat up the attack? Well, yes, there are. There's the move c takes b2. Well, that carries a huge threat against the rook. And if white goes rook b1, then notice that the pawn controls the c1 square. Now, I think rook d8 is going to be absolutely devastating. Because the bishop has to block. If it would have blocked on d4, we would have had rook takes d4. Uh, sorry, rook takes d4, queen takes d4, and then queen f1 checkmate. Just simple calculation there. And now we go rook takes d2, and again, we would have had mate. Okay. So here, obviously, we have to start by taking the queen. Because we are in check, and black is attacking our queen, and black is up in exchange. So the move queen to e4 makes zero sense. It just trades queens, and black is up in tier. So this, is, this we can play without calculation. Now we have to decide what rook to capture. And the decision, I think, is largely predicated on which move allows our knight to escape the easiest. Well, that clearly seems to be knight takes d8, because if we play knight takes f8, that knight is not going to be able to escape from f8. Okay, easy enough. 54. All right. So now we have a somewhat convoluted situation. We are down an exchange. We are down an exchange. But we obviously have this possibility of knight takes d3 check. So knight takes d3 check, I think, is the most straightforward move. That is the move that we should start with. What happens after knight takes d3 check? Well, if white goes king up to c2, then we can probably capture the rook with check. Let's put that to the side. Knight takes d3 check. If the king steps away to b1, well, then we can still take the rook on e1 because we are simultaneously threatening mate on d1. So white probably has to take back. Then we have a check on d3. That looks very promising. So let's look around. Are there any other interesting candidate moves other than knight takes d3 check? Well, queen takes d3 just gives up the bishop. Knight e2 check, no. We can sack the bishop on b2, but that doesn't make sense either. So a lot of these, you're solving not necessarily by understanding why the correct move is correct. You're solving them through process of elimination. Knight takes d3 check. Only logical move. 
Okay, again, I think the only logical move here is to take the rook with check. I just don't see anything else that fits the bill. Bang. And now we just need to find a calm move. So if we move the queen away, you might be attracted to the move queen to d4. Then we're allowing a very nasty check on e6 because the bishop is controlling the escape squares. The bishop is hanging and the pawn is hanging. So I think the move is bishop f6. We just control everything, defend everything. That's it. We're up two pawns and we're winning in that position. 55. All right. So here we're down a piece. And again, I would draw your attention to the fact that black is not actually threatening any checks. So a move like rook d7 is very much a possibility here. I'm also seeing a very tempting sacrifice uh, with rook takes g7. So rook takes g7 has to be calculated. But so does rook d7. So let me start with rook d7. Rook d7, rook b1, rook takes g7, king h8, rook h7. That's probably going to be winning. Rook d7 is very tempting. But we have to calculate rook takes g7 because if that move works, it leads to checkmate. Let's try to puzzle out rook takes g7. So rook g7, king g7, rook d7. If the king moves back to the 8th rank, black gets checkmated. King h8, queen f6. Unfortunately, after takes takes rook d7, the king can step forward to g6. And there things get very messy. I don't think that there's checkmate. We check on f7. But the king keeps running toward g5, and my intuition says that we don't have enough there. It gets really messy. The king can escape toward e3. No. I vote rook d7. Yep. Easy enough. All right. So here, we, there must be some sort of mating mechanism, and I think there is. Um, if we start with bishop h6 check, then the king can slide over to d1. And there, queen f1 is not mate because we have allowed the queen to block with queen e1. But what if we switch up the move order? What if we start with queen f1 check and then play bishop h6? Well, that's got to be mating. Bishop h6, three more, and then we'll conclude. Okay, so here we have, what do we have? Well, we have a very exposed king on g1, and we have a pawn on d4, and I noticed that that pawn is undefended. Not only is it undefended, but if we are able to capture it, we will be forking the king and the rook. So a move that seems logical, also because the knight is hanging, is queen f7 to c4. Because we're protecting the knight and we're hitting the pawn on d4. And we're activating the queen. So queen c4, we're also threatening a fork on c3, weirdly enough. Queen c4, let's give it a shot. Rook to d1. Okay, so we have moves like queen e2. But the downside of queen e2 is that it lets the white king uh, queen escape the cage. It lets the white queen travel back to b3. So I'm noticing that the rook and the bishop are undefended. So perhaps we should look for a fork like queen a4. But again, queen a4 I think is wrong because white can throw in this check on d5 and go back to b3. So let me think here for a second. Queen c2 is a move. Queen e2 is a move. Oh, queen e2 is a move. Queen e2. Queen d5 check. King h8, queen b3. And then in that resulting position, we have the move rook to e3. Queen a4 and rook takes a3, deflecting the queen from the rook. So here things already get kind of convoluted. I would say that most players with a good tactical foundation should be able to get about 53, 54. When you get into the high 50s and into the early 60s, things get very predicated on like pure calculation. And that's when they get kind of harder to explain. And that's when calculation itself becomes more important. Queen f7 check. Okay, let's do two more. Well, this one seems very easy, I think. Ah, maybe not. Well, I think the only logical square for the king has to be g1. Because then we escape all of the checks. But after queen g1, I think the idea for black is to play queen to e6. Or queen to e7. And now we have to be very careful because this is a mate threat. But my simple question is, what if we just play h3 and create a Luft square for the king on h2? Once the king reaches h2, it's very important that the queen controls all of the squares on this diagonal where the queen could po possibly check. There we go. That's 59. And let's solve one last one for 60. Okay, so we're in check. We need to move out of check. Well, we can rule out bishop g5 because... It allows rook takes f7 check. We can probably rule out king back to f8 because it allows a very nasty back rank check. 
King F6 looks completely absurd just a priori. So King H7 seems to be the most reasonable option. On the other hand, after King H7, why does Rook takes E7? So wait a second. Maybe we need to revisit our assumptions. Queen G5 doesn't make any sense. King H7, Rook takes E7. HG, King H3. Oh, King H7, Rook takes E7. There is a beautiful tactic. And the way that I saw this tactic is I noticed that the rook uh, is x-raying the king along the second rank. So if the f-pawn were to disappear, we could actually promote to a queen with check. And so the move here is a move that removes the guard. It removes the f2-pawn. It's queen takes g3. Now, if white takes with the queen, then the king is safe. We can just take back, and we can promote d1 equals queen. And there, folks, is 60. That's all it took. Um, it wasn't... I mean, I really believe that most people should be able to get 60 with careful reasoning. Hopefully you were able to see that these exercises were not, they were not insane. Oh, and I'm gonna get one wrong just to show you that starting from 61, you have to put, I would say three, four minutes of thought uh, into each exercise. So there's 60, uh, we're gonna pause here. I hope you enjoyed uh, these solutions and I hope that this uh, was semi-educational. I went a lot faster than I did in my previous Puzzle uh, puzzle Rush Survival run uh, for those watching on YouTube, but hopefully I was able to keep it relatively watchable for those who find the first 30 exercises or so to be very basic.